Dillon from visualbroccoli.com. In this session, we're going to go ahead, as the title implies, and make a mock-up of a dummies book. And of course, you can do this for any title you want. Uh, the one thing is, this tour really is a foundation, is how you can create your own custom, you know, cover page for our 2D uh, Photoshop template, which we talked about, and show you how to take a flat image and apply it to this 2D book template we provide you in Photoshop to kind of give your that that book kind of a realistic photograph, if you will, of a book. And you see this in a lot of catalogs with with DVDs, etc. Where a lot of times they're really not actual photographs; they're all mocked up in Photoshop, and that's what this is. I actually showed you kind of a version of my dummies book before my previous tutorial with Visual Broccoli for Dummies. And even here, I kind of broke a little bit outside the dummies mode, but I have the popular font, use my own character. So you have a lot of variables here that you can do. And there's nothing wrong with actually putting your own image in here. But we're going to go ahead and follow the dummies theme a little bit, you know, very closely to a T here. In fact, here is what I originally created for my presentation that I'm doing later on this month uh, on Bedside Manor. And so I wanted Bedside for Manners for Dummies because there is no such book and I wanted something kind of humorous as a talking point. When I originally made it, hey, those looks look pretty good. Then I thought, because I'm me, why not even customize this character a little bit more? So I created an EMS character and I thought it's really going to speak to my audience. Now, when people see this, they're going to know for the most part, I made this, which is kind of nice. Uh, we also give you all the assets, so make sure you download all the assets from the website, which includes the, the uh, 2D book style, which is in Photoshop with gradients and all. And I also have a template for the uh, dummies book that you can edit, but I hope you at least take a shot at making it from scratch, which is what I'm going to do in my tutorial. And I'm also going to give you the artwork here, and I've created a few of these, and I created these and drew these in Flash. Obviously, you can see they're very straightforward images and I'm going to give you the text. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and make something for dummies. All right, I'm in Photoshop, and we're going to get started. We're going to create File, New, and we're going to get this to match up with the 2D template as close as possible. So the size of this image, I want it to be 1104 pixels wide by 1417 pixels tall, a resolution 72, and our background is transparent, which is fine. That looks good. Now I downloaded, or actually copied off a website, a copy of the book, just to kind of use as a guide, but more importantly, I want this yellow. So I'm gonna grab the eyedropper, and I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this, and I'm gonna fill this with yellow. And now I'm going to go to view and fit on screen. Looking great. I'm going to call this background. Now I'm going to add a new layer. And this is going to be my header. Oops. Got to click on the text. And this one is going to be black. Looks good. And I'm going to get rid of those marching ants, select, deselect. And we'll transform again. So edit, pre-transform. And now it's kind of tough to get at the, the corners. I need to get around one of these corners here, and I can't quite get to it. Uh, so um, to do that, I'm going to just do Control-0 or Command-0, or you can go to View. Same thing here, fit on screen. And then it will actually allow me to get around the edge so I can get those double arrows and give me the rotation icon. So you see those double arrows show me that I can rotate this. Now I'm just going to bring this a little bit out so it goes over the edge. Okay, that's looking good. Now, let's add another layer. We're going to do another marquee. And we'll make this somewhat thin. And let's make this red. It'll be any color, green, blue. Uh, just be consistent with it because this color is going to be used in a few other locations as well. And let's fill that with red. And we do the same thing we did before. Just deselect and we're going to free transform, control T or command T, get over on the edge, kind of come up at an angle. And let's bring that up and make sure there's nothing, no space between the two. And I may have to stretch this out a little bit. Not being that particular. That's looking good. We'll call this red line. 
Great. Now let's go ahead and create our bubble. To do this, we need to go over here and I'm going to grab the custom shape tool. If yours is not visible, which more than likely it is not, it's probably gonna be the rectangular tool. Selecting the rectangular tool, hold, and come down here and choose the custom shape. And now you see the star there. Come up here and you'll see options. Now obviously I have the shape tool that I want, but in here, this happens to be bubbles, but more than likely this is what you're gonna see. If I go to the flyout menu, we hit right, re, uh, reset shapes, do okay. This is probably what you're gonna see by default, which happens to be our bubble. But if you do the flyout, you see other options, including other talk bubbles. But this is what I want. And I'm gonna make sure this third box is selected, which is gonna be uh, just kind of a fill box. And I'm gonna come over here and make a healthy bubble. And something like that. And it's gonna fill with the foreground. And I'm gonna drag this right below the black header. We are looking good, bring it over just a little bit there. Let's just go ahead and add some text. Let's make sure this is white. Click, and we're gonna call this 101 ways to one thing it really helps if you get it above it. There it goes. 101 ways to serve broccoli. And I wanna go ahead and just do something with the fonts here. It's 54 is my size and my point between is a little tight. So I'm gonna change it from 45 and I can go up here and choose one of these presets or I can go like 48 here. It's probably what I need. That looks good. Or I can just hit the arrow key up and down within there and I can do that as well. And bring this over here. And I use my arrow key as well. That looks great. That's kind of my subtitle. Now let's go ahead and bring in our character. So open. And this is a pre-made character. Of course, you can use anything you want. I'm gonna grab the dummies guy, bring him in, and I'm actually gonna drag him. He's a very simple guy. I created him in Flash, where I create a lot of my artwork. I'm gonna resize him. You do Control T or Command T. And for time's sake, I'm kind of going into shortcuts because this is a little bit longer tutorial. So I want to make sure I get this under 15 minutes. And that looks great. And now we need to bring in our text up here. Before we let's finish down here, let's go ahead and grab our text tool again. And this time we're going to type in here a reference. And for the rest of us, exclamation. And let's change the color of that to the red. And let's bring that over here. And I didn't quite get it spelled right. And I wanna make this quite a bit larger. So I'm gonna go in here where it says 54. And I'm just gonna use the arrow key to kind of scroll through a larger size. And you notice when I make the, the size larger, it gets tighter here because it's not adjusting the distance between the two. This is not like, you know, Word or the documents. You kind of have to be careful of that. So I'm gonna go in here and actually adjust the sizes, the distance. Now, one thing I do wanna do is take this text and make this smaller. And I'm gonna do one other thing. I'm gonna grab this line and just come over here just a little bit, offset it a little bit. And again, if you look at the book, you know, you pull that, you can use that as a reference. And I could probably even go even further with this. In fact, I probably should spell reference right. There we go. Okay, there's that. And one last thing we gotta do, we gotta add a t an author name here. So we'll go by. And I'm gonna drop the size of this just a little bit. And I wanna make sure it's black. So here I'm gonna change the color in the colors palette to black. And I don't want it to be bold, so let's go ahead and uh, bold italic, I'm sorry. I just want to be bold, and we do that. And we're bringing this down here. Looking good. Now we just need to bring our titles up here. We've got two things left, so we go File, Open. Now, you can go down and look for Dummies font, but it does not install into Photoshop. Uh, the only way I could do this on my computer is I had to do it in Flash, which actually recognizes font. Uh, and I can do this in PowerPoint, but uh, Photoshop and my Adobe product products would not recognize this font, and I'm not 100% sure. 
Uh, I did a lot of searching on why, and eventually I just gave up. So I need to change the color of this. So I'm going to do a color overlay, because right now we can't see it. It's going to choose that lovely red, and I want to click on the swatch. Come over here with the eyedropper. So if you notice, if we slip over here or to another layer, I can grab a color, or even from my, you know, for anything else in here, click yellow. Looking great, do OK. I'm going to transform. I did a control T. Now you see my bounding boxes are off the screen. If I hit control zero or go to view, fit on screen. Now I can see that bounding box where I can resize. And I'm going to keep this somewhat healthy size. That looks good. And before I turn it, let's add one more layer of text. And we're going to call this, uh, we're going to choose my text tool. And I'm going to just say broccoli for dummies. And that's way too small. So let's go ahead and change this to 72. Actually, I want it even larger than that. I'm going to do the transform. And so I can just kind of eyeball it the size I want. And that looks great. And of course, red is not the color we want. And we're going to go ahead and change this to white. And by the way, the font that I'm going to use for this is going to be Myrid Pro. And I'm going to go ahead and make it a bold italic. And that's going to best match the, what the book does. Now, I want to turn both these so they kind of follow the, the black box. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, name my, here's my dummies text. Here's my broccoli text. If I click and hold down the shift, I can select both of those. See, now you see both of those are selected. Now I'm going to do edit, transform, and rotate. There we go. That's looking great. Now, I want to go ahead and merge everything so I can pull it over as one image into my uh, 2D template. To do that, let's create a new layer. Now, I'm going to pull my, my layers palette away here so I can just show you the flyout menu. If I click on the flyout menu over here, you see down here I have an option to merge visible. Now, if I just hit Merge Visible, it's going to flatten everything into one image, and I've lost all my layers and the ability to add it to the stuff. So I'm going to do Control-Z. Another little technique is use the little modifier key, and I'm going to do the same thing, come down here to Merge Visible. Before I do that, I'm going to push and hold down the Alt key on the PC or Option key on the Mac. It now will flatten it and maintain all the layers. Now, all I have to do is I can drag this into my 2D book template. Well, that is all the time we have. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial because I know I did, and I really like sharing things that really I have found helpful for myself. Well, until the next time, I hope you always find unique ways to make your presentation more editable for your audience. Take care.